I'm Alpha Trevette. Here's my five minute take on the world. Starting the clock for you right now and saying, whoops, starting the clock for you now and saying thanks for listening where or watching wherever you are. It is deeply appreciated, as are your thoughts and comments. We're going to talk a little bit about the world turning upside down because we talked a little bit about that yesterday, but I don't want to do the whole five minutes on that today because it's a weekend. Let's lighten it up a little bit. So let's start off with the brain stretcher question. 20% of women, okay, 20% of women, one in five, say they do this regularly behind their husband or boyfriend's back and hope he doesn't find out. And in most cases, he does not find out. What do you think it is? We'll have the answer for you in about four and a half minutes. All right, world turning upside down. We have, we're having serious problems on our own border right now with Mexico. It, border agents shot a kid for throwing rocks at him. Kid turns out was a, a smuggler of sorts. And now Mexico's upset. And their army soldiers came across the border and grabbed something and ran back, which is a violation of the law. El Presidente Calderon is saying he will do whatever it takes to protect, protect Mexican migrants. Why don't you do whatever it takes to keep them at home, okay? Why don't you provide them an economy and a lifestyle and jobs and all that stuff that they can get at home? I know presidents and politicians don't create jobs. That's the private sector. But maybe create some laws in which the private sector can create jobs for them? I don't know. But I think you're too addicted to that money that they run across the border and make and ship back to you. Billions of dollars. That's kind of it, isn't it? Our Gulf of Mexico, BP and the federal government now saying, you know, I guess we're squirting a little more oil in there than we thought. Yeah. Remember at first they said, but 5,000 gallons a day. No big deal. In fact, Tony Hayward, CEO of BP, said, hey, you know, it's compared to the ocean. It's not a big deal at all. Okay. Now they're saying it's about uh, 60 million gallons. Yeah, that's that's a lot, isn't it? And then meanwhile, Barack Obama, who says he's on top of this thing, he's looking for some ass to kick, has not even talked to Tony Hayward, the CEO of BP, has not even talked to some real serious oil experts and thrown out some ideas and said, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to get this thing fixed. He says, we got our boots on the throat of BP. Well, turns out the BP he's talking about is British pensioners because people in Great Britain are kind of upset with the president right now. All the things he's saying about BP causing the stock to go down, that's hurting the pensioners who depend on the stocks for their retirements and a lot of it tied up in BP, British Petroleum. That's one reason that the UK is pretty doggone excited about this soccer match today in the World Cup, football match, whatever. Anyway, it's the World Cup and the UK is playing in the United States. You know, we here in the United States are like, okay, fine. In the UK, boy, they're all excited because it's kind of a grudge match now with the whole BP thing. They want to win this thing. We're not all that wrapped up in football, soccer. And the World Cup, while I hope things go well and I hope there's no real terrorist activity or anything like that, and I hope all the, the matches go along swimmingly without any violence, I have to say this, as a sports fan, and I'm a big sports fan, Major League Baseball, NFL football, college football, college basketball, love them all, big fan. But never in my wildest imagination have I ever thought about becoming a hooligan. I mean, going to another team's arena or stadium and getting so rowdy they have to put a fence around me for crying out loud. And then after the game, win or lose, going out and tearing up the town. That doesn't make sense to me. And, and this is a country, or a continent actually, that chides us for not being bigger fans of a game that you can actually end in a tie. I mean, it's two 45-minute halves and you start at zero and count up, and then you start at 45 and count back down. And then you can add time on, and it just doesn't make sense to me. And in the UK, another important uh, uh, sport, uh, beloved sport, cricket. No, we don't understand that. I was watching a cricket match one time, went over to Edinburgh, I'm sitting at a pub watching the cricket match, and I asked the guy what the score was, and he said it's 120 to nothing. I went, whoa! And he said, ah, it's only the first inning. <laughs> wow, some teams don't score 120 runs in baseball in a whole half a season whole half. That does kind of ridiculous. In the half a season. And this is a, a country that also has another favorite sport, shin kicking. Yeah, they just had the shin kicking championships in Great Britain. Yeah, it's two guys grab themselves by the shoulders and proceed to kick the shin out of each other. It's an ancient sport. In fact, in 1950, they had to outlaw steel tip boots because guys were getting their legs broken over this. In the uh, 19th century, guys from one village would challenge guys to another village and they'd have battles, you know, and so in order to get ready for these battles, they toughen up their shins using mallets by pounding on their shins. See? Hmm? So, baseball, football, basketball, doesn't look so crazy now, does it, huh? 
Anyway, go USA. Here's the answer to that uh, brain stretcher question for you for today. 20% of women actually go behind their husband or boyfriend's back and do this, hoping they don't find out. Take money from their wallets. Mm. Like you don't take enough money from us as it is? All right, it's the weekend. Get out there and enjoy. Go USA. USA. USA.